I was 15 years old and I knew nothing about pole vault. It took me about six months to even just learn the event. So I went to my first meet, I broke the meet record. And to see my name up on a piece of paper saying Alicia Newman, it just drove me in a different way than athletics did. And I said, I wanna keep raising the bar. I explain it as if it's like you're dropping on a roller coaster. But now I'm flying, so I'm like a superhero. People love to watch it because not everyone can do it. Yeah. <laughs> as an athlete, especially a female athlete, you're put on this pedestal of looking good and performing well. Through the years, I've had a lot of male coaches, a lot of great male coaches, and a lot of male coaches that had too much of an opinion. And it really affected me as a child because I was 14, and you're telling a 14-year-old she needs to lose a couple pounds. Dealing with somebody telling you you're not good enough because you're too heavy has created insecurities. And that's where I dealt with a lot of mental health on my body image and being out on the track. Oh, are they looking? Is the camera getting me a wrong angle? Is the camera doing this? So I'm constantly thinking about my body image when I should be just focusing on performing. Um, and I think that comes with female and female in sport. I always felt like talking was weakness. So it took a while to finally, you know, sit down and really lay everything out. And one thing, my doctor, I never went to a therapist, but I was very close to my doctor. And she would say, everything that bothers you, write down on a piece of paper. Whether it's your body image, whether it's someone said something about you that day. And when you fall asleep at night, close your eyes and crumple it up and throw it out the window. And that allowed me to have my peace of mind to kind of move forward because I crumpled it up, they said it, it's now garbage, moving on. And the mind's very powerful, so sometimes you need to trick it. <laughs> my parents were very, you know, you're gonna find the love of your life and that person's gonna be your everything. And my relationship started out like that, five years, six years ago. It was incredible. And then it's sort of leading on to a little bit more toxic. There was a little bit more red flags. But as a person who's fallen in love, I was blinded. But I never in any words or light or life what I have thought I would have been through or been a victim of domestic violence. When it happened, I completely was in shock. Is this real life? Is this? the real person that I actually fell in love with. I think going through it, it's made me a very, very strong individual. I think I needed to see those lights to realize it was a very toxic and a not great relationship. I needed to get out of it. Talking was the only way for me to see the other side. And talking and feeling better and realizing I'm not alone and dealing with other people that have dealt the same situation. It's like, it's, it's so much, it's like a light. It's like bricks off your back. It's like you don't have someone pulling you down to the dark side. You know, you can keep climbing, you can keep going up every mountain and, and just living life to the fullest. It's sad that I had to get that far but I'm here, I'm living, I'm happy. I'm training for my second Olympics now. Just gotta keep going towards that light. <laughs>